U.S. justice corrupted, B-737 MAX victims had no chance against Boeing. How would one call if a prosecutor in a high-profile criminal case against a giant company, Boeing, joins the law firm that defended her biggest case several months after the case? What about calling it the Boeing modus operandi, or perhaps U.S. justice denied? How would one call if a prosecutor in a high-profile criminal case against a giant company, Boeing, joins the law firm that defended her biggest case several months after the case? What about calling it the Boeing modus operandi, or perhaps U.S. justice denied? 346 people died in 2019 in two Boeing 737 MAX crashes flying on Ethiopian Airlines in Ethiopia and earlier on a Lion Air flight in Indonesia. A criminal trial against Boeing was settled earlier this year with a deferred prosecution agreement, and it shows now why. Boeing is a Seattle-based aircraft manufacturing company with a corporate headquarter in Chicago, Illinois. Why would a criminal complaint against Boeing adjudicate in F.T. Worth, Texas? Boeing defense law firm Kirkland and Ellis made a sweet deal with the leading U.S. prosecutor, Aaron Neely Cox. Months after this Aaron Neely Cox quit her prominent government job and joined Kirkland and Ellis raising suspicion of a cooked prosecution. The criminal Boeing case was meant to bring justice to the 346 families of those that died in the Ethiopian Airlines and Lion Air crashes. The result of this Texas trial was that no senior Boeing executive was charged. A report published today in the Corporate Crime Reporter revealed the details of this arrangement pointing out that the lead attorney prosecuting the case for the U.S. Justice Department Former U.S. Attorney Aaron Neely Cox joined the same law firm Boeing had hired to defend against the high-profile case she prosecuted. Filing the case against Boeing in F.T. Worth, Texas was surprising from the beginning since Texas had no connection to any of this. According to the report, the case was settled with a deferred prosecution agreement. This was an agreement the Columbia Law professor John Coffey at the time called one of the worst deferred prosecution agreements I have seen. The Crime Reporter published a response from Michael Stumo and Nadia Million, who lost their 24-year-old daughter in the Ethiopian airline crash. We were outraged that the Department of Justice prosecutors cut a sweetheart deal with Boeing which let former Boeing CEO Dennis Muhlenberg and the Boeing executives and board members off the hook for their criminal negligence and fraud which caused the death of Samaya while they enriched themselves. Stumo and Milron said in a statement in response to the news we were confused about why the Northern District of Texas was chosen by the Justice Department given that none of the criminal behavior had anything to do with that district. Was it a compliant judge that Boeing favored? Was it compliant prosecutors that knew Boeing's criminal defense team? This is shocking new information. Paul Hudson of the consumer group Flyers Rights told E Turbo News the case is an example of the revolving door where thousands of ex government employees go to work for parties they regulated as government officers. But the revolving door is not supposed to be a conveyor belt. Hudson concluded if a chief federal prosecutor joins a criminal defendant party or its defense firm shortly after representing the U.S. government in a related criminal matter, it raises both appearance concerns and ethical issues.